<laughs> Mother, I bring you fresh prey. You are so kind to me, daughters. <laughs> ah, now, let's take a look at him. Well, well, Ethan Winters. Step on me. Resident Evil Village is an action horror video game where you, a completely average human being, are chased around by a living meme, a possessed doll, a misunderstood fish guy, and the Dusk Dude. And helping you along your clown car escapade is a horse and buggy based weapons dealer who will also cook you chorba de pork if you bring him the right ingredients. I can hardly wait. Just excuse me a moment. Here it is. Please, join me. Somehow, all of this combines into an experience that's actually enjoyable, but it's not without its flaws, and I also don't think it lives up to its expectations as the sequel to the game that reinvented the Resident Evil series. The most important thing that Resident Evil Village lacks is focus. Resident Evil 7 and Resident Evil 2 were games of immense focus. They were games designed so tightly that hours of gameplay could be found in a single area barely larger than the first level of Half-Life 2. In Resi Village, everything is a lot more spread out, as you might expect considering it takes place in a village and not a single house but that comes at a cost. Whereas other recent Resident Evil titles might loop around a single location several times over, in Resident Evil Village you go to several different locations to do various objectives, and then you return to a central hub where you have the option of unlocking a few different houses that you weren't able to get into before, but it's not a necessity. In addition to that, I think RE Village suffers in the sense that it's not really a great action game, and it's not a good horror game either. Shooting and moving is unsatisfying and clunky by design, presumably to make the player feel more vulnerable in typical horror game fashion, but obviously it doesn't make for a fluid, fast-paced action experience. Meanwhile, they've greatly upped the enemy and resource count from 7 and 2 in a bid to turn Village into an action game, but the atmosphere suffers as a result. The other factor in that problem is difficulty. Hardcore difficulty, which which I started on is where RE8's version of horror truly comes alive, with scarce resources and monsters that are tough to take down and lethal even in their weakest form. The problem is this intro sequence that runs on a 5 minute timer which has the second highest enemy count of the entire game, except you have none of the gear that would make it possible to actually survive for that long. Hardcore was an impossibility. So then, since I hadn't made much progress anyways, I restarted my playthrough on normal, breezed through the intro sequence, and then found that the rest of the game was so easy that it was no longer scary. What really makes this game shine, in my opinion, is the presentation. The cast of villains is memorable, with their very unique personalities and abilities. One has telekinesis, another can turn into an acid-spitting fish, another can telepathically induce hallucinations and the last is a vampire. The levels are equally as varied. A village with unlockable houses, a castle with unkillable monsters that chase you around, a dam with falling water levels that slowly reveals a drowned village, and more. And then there's the audio-visual polish the recent Resident Evil games have been known for. The deliberately mixed soundscapes, the detailed, highly realistic sound design, and of course, the beautiful art direction of a snowbound European castle village. Resident Evil Village is also a very well-paced video game in general, with the addition of an item shop, weapon upgrades, and a cooking system that serves the purpose of providing permanent character stat buffs. There are many tangible, important things to find in the world, like currency or rare ingredients or weapon parts, all of which make the world exciting to explore. And there's also a pretty okay New Game Plus mode, where there's even more weapons to upgrade and unlock, as well as unlockable infinite ammo cheats that can be turned on and off for a more sandboxy experience, if that's something you want. 
So it's kind of cool and quirky, and it's certainly not a bad game, but I just feel very meh about the whole experience. It's a scaled up version of Resident Evil 7 that takes a lot of swings at a lot of different things and end up spinning in circles. It feels wrong to say that it was a disappointment and that it's worse than its direct predecessor, but the fact is that it lacks many of the strengths that I appreciated in the Resi games that I like. I think Resident Evil Village was a disappointment simply because it wasn't the game I was hoping it would be, meaning that it's actually probably a good game and I'm just too stubborn to accept that people like different things. Anyways, if you like idiosyncratic first-person action games with campy stories and cool characters, then I'd say give this game a shot. If you were looking for a tightly focused survival horror experience, then I'd say just stay away because this isn't that at all. You could also play Amori, because I hear that's pretty good too.